in this uh, session my main focus is to look at the clearing as well as the reporting mechanisms of the OTC derivatives uh, contracts across the United States, the European Union and the Singapore. Three major, uh, uh, three major geographies. What are the key differences uh, with respect to these clearing and reporting uh, requirements? And uh, 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 which of them are applicable to which kind of geographies? Because the major reason why this discussion is required is we all appreciate the fact that the OTC derivatives uh, contract is probably the biggest of the financial market, the largest financial market that is existing in the world today, right? Uh, probably uh, the interest rate uh, specific markets out of these, probably the foreign currency uh, are... Uh, uh, commodities or uh, interest rates probably the interest rate uh, based market is almost uh, a very huge market then uh, over the last decade we have seen the credit default swaps market going really uh, extraordinary then the foreign exchange linked contracts all these things forming a bigger chunk of the OTC derivatives uh, markets and uh, it has been uh, widely accepted by a large community that uh, because of the large unregulations that have been present in the OTC derivatives market, lacking of transparency in the OTC derivatives uh, market, the biggest financial crisis of 2008 had actually occurred. So, to uh, as a correction mechanisms to the same, there have been a lot of uh, propositions that have uh, come up with respect to uh, uh, how the clearing has to be done, how the reporting has to be done for all these things. And that is what is the major focus of this uh, article. So, just to start off, here we are uh, talking about uh, we are talking about uh, how to typically reduce the risk. Right, we have been uh, discussing about uh, the various mechanisms of reducing the risk in uh, OTC derivatives uh, contract. The major uh, mechanism being uh, the central clearing party. Centralized clearing party CCPs. Right, apart from that we have even discussed earlier in some of our uh, uh, credit risk uh, related uh, lectures that we can even uh, go into a multilateral uh, netting kind of uh, mechanism which could reduce uh, the risk quite drastically or uh, we can talk of uh, margins and mark to market kind of uh, settlements even in the OTC uh, derivatives mechanism or a, a slightly uh, newer one is more of a loss sharing something like an insurance kind of a mechanism itself it's pooling of the losses wherein uh, each member will actually uh, come up with a member default fund contribute to this uh, member default fund if any one of the members has defaulted the loss is uh, shared by the various members in this group so this is one more way of reducing the overall risk but the central clearing uh, mechanism is much more beneficial because we have a centralized uh, entity which is generally a default free kind of an entity. It acts as a central counterparty to both the trades. So probably it may be uh, something like for the buyer it acts as a seller and for the for the long it acts as a short for the short it acts as a long so it takes uh, an uh, offsetting it takes an opposite uh, position or it acts as a counterparty to each of the trade so overall because of this centralized counterparty the in the pricing mechanism the prices become more and more transparent and uh, earlier the lack of transparency also was one of the major reasons for the financial debacle 
now here the financial transparency is increased because uh, the pricing transparency exists because of the centralized clearing house and uh, at, at any point in time the default loss the loss of default can very well be reduced the severity associated with the loss of default can be reduced in the otc derivatives transaction so that is where the, the there was there has been an increasing demand for the centralized uh, clearing uh, parties and that is uh, that is where different uh, geographies uh, different jurisdictions united states the european union and singapore had slightly uh, differences uh, in the role of uh, ccp but typically when i talk about uh, a ccp it can be formed directly by the members itself which is more like a mutual ownership kind of stuff or it can be uh, formed as a separate uh, entity which is a for profit kind of uh, entity also either way the ccps can very well be established now whatever the clearing that happens through this uh, ccp right the clearing that uh, happens through the each of these ccps it has to be reported the data has to be reported to trade repositories they are centralized databases kind of stuff the trade repositories which are centralized uh, databases for all these otc derivatives so they actually contain a pre trade information before the trade whatever the quotes and all whatever have been uh, really provided and even the post trade this is the place where more transparency is required at what uh, price the trade got executed the executed uh, price because there is a lot of negotiation that can happen between the parties so the quotes as well as the executed price all of them once the clearing has happened that information has to be reported to the trade repository and with respect to this information reporting also there is some kind of uh, uh, restriction uh, or there are some kind of uh, differences between uh, the us the european union and in the singapore what uh, the us uh, typically uh, talks of is they have to be almost on a live basis there is immediate kind of a reporting whatever uh, the earliest the technology can permit the trade data has to be reported very immediately whereas when it comes to a uh, european union and singapore they have allowed for uh, one day with respect to the reporting and once it is reported the trade uh, repository has to actually uh, report this to the public a public reporting it is almost on a real time basis whatever uh, it is reported uh, whatever uh, the clearing uh, central clearing party reported uh, to the trade repository and uh, generally that's like a few minutes so once it is reported the, the the trade repository should do a public reporting within uh, within no time almost like a real time kind of a uh, requirement whereas uh, when it uh, comes to european uh, union and singapore at least with respect to uh, public uh, reporting there is no, no there is no mention about the real time reporting at all they can report it with some kind of a time gap no mentioning about the real time reporting with respect to european union and the singapore and majorly the more and more it is reported to the public it gives a lot of information to identify the risk with each of the positions right risk identification becomes more and more easier you can very well assess the concentration of the risk in what kind of instruments in what kind of portfolios what kind of uh, investments or exposures are coming up so more and more transparency in the trades will uh, bring in more and more effectiveness uh, in the operations and the confidence in the market typically uh, goes up in the investors so all these will really help in more and more participation in the market which could result in the sizes of the markets going up quite drastically 
and coming to this uh, the ccp is what we typically see again across the countries with respect to us european union and singapore with respect to us we see that are probably us and european union more or less uh, the clearing part clearing and trading should happen for all asset classes clearing and trading should happen for uh, all asset classes they need to be reported and uh, there is something called as uh, probably with respect to us alone there is something called as phased reporting what i mean by this phased reporting is they they uh, they, they talk about the interest rates related stuff interest rate derivatives need to be uh, reported on uh, a high priority basis then we have foreign exchange related uh, derivatives and then we are talking about uh, commodity based uh, derivatives so there is an order with respect to the reporting that is why we call it as a uh, phased reporting here whereas in european union okay the clearing and trading of all asset classes is required but there is no phased reporting all of them need to be reported uh, at a time no phased kind of a reporting uh, here but when it comes to uh, singapore the central clearing okay it is fine with the uh, ccp clearing but not the trading trading of all asset classes is not required but central clearing is required for uh, all asset classes and that too there is some exception with respect to forex <coughs> there is an exception with respect to forex swaps and forwards but otherwise for all other uh, derivative uh, contracts there is a central clearing but uh, trading was not uh, required for all the asset classes and when it uh, comes even uh, to the reporting uh, aspect singapore goes again the prioritizing wise interest rate foreign exchange and oil derivatives oil based derivative contracts these three need to be reported on a high priority and after that all other reportings can be done so that is the kind of uh, mechanism uh, singapore has put in place uh, with respect to the reporting but the simple the central uh, point in all these things is with respect to the clearing or reporting the reporting to the trade repositories all the jurisdictions all the typical jurisdictions have really backed that because they are of the feeling that it is going to improve the tra transparency post trade post trade transparency is going to increase quite effectively in the process and uh, as a part of a requirement also they have to maintain uh, all the jurisdictions very clearly uh, support that client confidentiality is one of the important uh, aspects as a part of their reporting they have to maintain a conf confidentiality of the client and when it comes to the record keeping also after the trade is over after the maturity period is over with respect to record keeping also what the united states uh, talks about is 5 years the records have to be kept after the contract expiration for 5 years the records have to be uh, kept whereas the european uh, union suggests for uh, 10 years but there is no such kind of record keeping requirement with respect to singapore so this is one more uh, place where the differences with respect to the central uh, clearing uh, comes uh, across uh, jurisdictions and we know just to just to uh, give you an understanding the otc derivatives market when we look at the regulators in us there are multiple regulators who are acting there is a cftc as well as sec basically it is a, a commodities uh, uh, what is that cfcp yeah it's a commodities futures trading commission commodities futures trading commission and sec there are multiple regulatory authorities in us and it's more and more prescriptive 
when I say the word prescriptive, they even uh, include whatever the exemptions that are associated with respect to insurance. More and more detail. There are exemptions with respect to insurance, consumer and commercial transactions, commodity forwards. They are all exempted here. So there is a kind of very detailing out uh, that is typically uh, done with respect to uh, the United States. Uh, whereas uh, when it comes to European Union, it is uh, typically regulated by ESMA, which is European Securities Market Authority. Even uh, that is the, that plays a role uh, for the approval of the OTC uh, products for uh, the central clearing process. Whereas in Singapore, it is uh, done through MAS, Monetary Authority of Singapore. So the bodies are different in each of the countries but the key difference being in United States there are multiple regulatory authorities whereas it's one only in European Union as well as in Singapore. And uh, coming to what needs to be cleared, which all transactions need to be cleared through the CCP, which all transactions need to be cleared through the CCP. It says there are in US all financial they have to be cleared. All financial entities, all end users, all financial entities, all end users and all entities about 10 billion. They have to so all financial entities, all end users and all other entities so, all financial entities, all end users and all other entities which have above 10 billion dollars, they need to be cleared through the central clearing party. Whereas, when it comes to European Union, all financial and non-financial entities above a threshold. So, here the 10 billion is not mentioned but above a threshold which will keep changing they have to do a central uh, clear, they have to go through a CCP. Whereas, uh, when it comes to Singapore, it's only for financial. All financial entities above threshold, they have to go through a central clearing party. So, there is a probably more and more stringency with respect to US because all financial and all end users, they have to go through the central clearing party itself. And here also, probably uh, it is like in com when it comes to US they, 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 and uh, probably European Union, they are focusing more on all these clearings through the domestic CCPs itself, but very few exceptions are there with respect to foreign CCPs, but majority of the clearing happens through the domestic CCPs itself. Whereas when it comes to Singapore, no such requirement. It can be cleared either through a domestic uh, clearing, uh, uh, CCP uh, central clearing party or through a foreign CCP itself. And uh, when it comes to a backloading of the trades, when it comes to a backloading of the trades, all of them are uh, going for a requirement of the backloading. Uh, there is a threshold that is uh, set with respect to uh, European Union and anything above one year it requires. So, it is a time based uh, duration that has been set with respect to Singapore. Anything above one year there needs to be a backloading associated with it. And if at all any transactions are non-centrally cleared, there needs to be margin requirements associated with each of these positions. And with respect to uh, the capital, that member losses, whatever the, the CCP, it has to cover the member losses also. It has to have adequate capital to make sure that if the members are defaulting, there is an, a sufficient liquidity, a sufficient backup associated with the CCP. So, US talks about maintain adequate capital at any point in time to make sure that the losses of the members are sufficiently uh, covered and uh, one year's operations, the, the capital should make sure that uh, apart from the covering of the losses of the members, one year operations are smoothly run. 
Whereas when it comes to European Union, there is a, a 5 million uh, euros capital requirement for the CCP, whereas no specific capital requirement exists uh, with respect to the, the Singapore jurisdiction. So what we are typically uh, seeing is uh, different jurisdictions uh, in uh, European Union and United States and Singapore, they have a different perspective of this uh, central clearing uh, party itself. So, an understanding of each of these uh, things is very much uh, required so that uh, the trading activities can be, uh, uh, can be implemented accordingly. So, this is just a, an article uh, which uh, highlights us uh, to, uh, to appreciate the differences uh, in the clearing and the reporting uh, processes uh, with respect to this uh, OTC derivatives against these three major geographies. If you have any further queries regarding this, you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the number that I have provided below or you can send in an email at wamsizar at pacegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.